Hey guys, it's Matt here. I just want to do a little review of Logos 10. Logos was kind enough to send a copy to me to review. I promised them that I would do it, and so here it is. I've used Logos for about 20 years. It's phenomenal software. Every year when it's time for an upgrade, you're like, oh man, is it really worth the money? Well, I'm just going to say up front, this one is worth the money, and I'm not just saying that because uh, they've sent me a review copy on this that I've really been able to enjoy using. I'm going to get in a moment to something I really, really disagree with them on about this. But I'm still going to tell you up front, I think you should buy this, especially if you have an upgrade, you get dynamic pricing. I uh, really think that it's worth the money this year to make that upgrade. Or if you want to upgrade to a full feature upgrade, uh, I'm going to put a link to a, up, a Lo Logos 10 in the description. I'll put a link to the feature upgrade in the description. Those are affiliate links that bless this ministry if you buy through them. So thank you for that. And uh, let's not take any more of your time. Let's jump right in. Here's the first thing you're going to notice. When you open Logos 10, it's a very large program, gigabytes and gigabytes of, of data in there, lots and lots of gigs. I mean, I forget even how many, it's a lot, but it boots really fast. I mean, that seems slow for, for Windows programs, but for Logos, that's actually incredibly fast. So the first thing I want to point you to is that the menus have actually shifted. They used to be across the top, and when you would bookmark things, they had little tiny icons. You couldn't hardly tell what you had. But now that they moved the menu to the left, you actually can put your bookmarks over here. It's, it's just super easy. You can see everything better. And whenever you, you know, do these kickouts, everything just, just appears a whole lot better. Didn't know if I liked it at first, but the more I've used it, I actually really do like it quite a bit. One of the things that they've upgraded is the fact book. The fact book is really an incredible thing. You can go to different topics, you can search for different topics, you can search for tabernacles, and uh, it shows you all these topics, it gives you the concept, it gives you a dictionary entries, it gives you maps, pictures, key passages, it's basically an, an, an all uh, one-stop shop for everything resource-wise on that. When you go to the fact book, and it's, it's beefed up, it's new, and it's improved. Even Bible dictionaries, like I can go to you know like 20 different Bible dictionaries here, directly on the Feast of Booths or the Feast of Tabernacles without having to go to the resource, do a search, find it. It just takes me right in, like Anchor Bible Dictionary on a Feast of Booths, Feast of Tabernacles. It just takes me right in there. It's really a, a wonderful thing. So Factbook has been beefed up. There's a lot more in there than there used to be. Now the next thing that they've upgraded is the advanced timeline. The old timeline was very cluttered. It just had all kinds of myriad of things in it that were very hard to navigate and it wasn't very intuitive. There's 18,293 events in this timeline. And so you're like, wow, how do I navigate that? Well, there's the filters. You could say, I want only New Testament things, like when was Jesus born? When you're like, well, Matt, when was Jesus born? That takes interpretation. Well, guess what? They've helped you with that. They give all kinds of different dates. There's early dates, there's late dates. When you click on it, it actually gives you a link in here, typically, that support that particular view. Really, really cool. You can also go up to view and you can sort by subject or type. That's really, really helpful. Uh, the advanced timeline, very cool feature. Now, the next thing that I want to show you is just the search. They've really improved the search. And you can also actually search your fact book right here. So instead of going to fact book and doing that, I can search for Paul right here and get right into everything that fact book would have shown me, right? So if I'm in fact book and I search for Paul, see, these are, these are the exact same uh, list over here as over here. And okay, I mean, if let's let's go to Paul. I didn't show you this in the fact book, but if you go to Paul and, and you get the dictionary uh, articles, you even get things that Paul was referred to as even pronouns. I mean, it's, he was in, referred to as a witness here one time. You know, we can look that up. And Acts twenty six sixteen. That's incredible. One of the cool things that they've done in search is that when you when you do a search, there's all kinds of um, basic operators that you can use. It used to be you had to have brackets and syntax and colons and all kinds of mess that I never spent the time learning all that. It was just so confusing. But now, like if you go do a morph search or you can you can do these and it actually gives you suggestions. Like if you want uh, every instance of one or the other all in one search, Christ or Jesus, or if you want only instances where both show up, Jesus Christ, then you can use these words. It shows you kind of what to do. Or here's a Bible reference, Bible colon quote that. And you can search for that Bible reference within your books, within your Bible dictionaries and resources. It's really, really cool. So if I click on that and it does it for me here, it's a pretty, pretty incredible feature. And here at the bottom, it tells you, you know, what book that's in. You can go right to it 30 times and the exegetical summary of John one through nine, starting on page 104. That's a cool feature. You can do a morph search wherever you use lemas, wherever you use, you know, Strong's numbers, roots, etc. Uh, very, very powerful feature in that you can search Hebrew and Greek. And again, it gives you the basic gist of, uh, you know, what kind of um, 
search modifiers that you can use over here on the sides. That's pretty cool. The last thing I want to talk about in this upgrade uh, is something that I'm a little bit contentious on, and this is the thing that I'm not really all that happy about in one sense. I, I think it's an amazingly cool feature. It's your print library feature, but I think that it was not communicated well, and um, I, I think that Logos kind of misstepped on this one, and I hate to say that because I'm a very loyal customer. I've been with them a long time, and, uh, and they've been very good to me, but you know, here's the email I got this morning. Add your print library to Logos. Wow, got a thousand books behind me. You know, I can really add that to Logos. Well, I get why you actually can't add all that to Logos uh, because I could go to a theological library to start scanning books, right? Because they give you this nifty feature on the app now when you have Logos 10 where you can actually use the camera in the Logos app to scan the uh, ISBNs of books and it puts it in your print library. Now, what does it mean to be in your print library? Let's, let's look at this, okay? So I'm gonna add a book to my print library. So we're gonna to go to Gordon Fee. And uh, we're gonna add Paul the Spirit and the People of God, okay? So now that's in my print library, right? So if I go to Gordon Fee, Paul the Spirit and the People of God, yep, it's right there. Now guess what, if I go to that book, hey, it's there, yay. Uh, it says, but I don't have a license to view this. Well, I thought I could add it to my print library. That's what they've been telling me. Hey, there's table of contents. So, oh, sorry, disabled, can't do that. Oh, it's not there. I can read snippets of it, but the, you know, the whole book's not there. So what are they talking about? Well, in this email, if you read closely, he says, now you can search your print library, just like any Logos digital resource. True and not true. Yes, you can search your print library. Amazing feature. That's really all they needed to say is, you can now search your print library with the logo search functionality, and that would be like, wow! I, my in, the indexes in the back of books are never sufficient. Like I can literally search as if it was like a PDF, and I was using edit and search. Incredible! Like I'm sold on that. That's that's all I really needed to hear. But I just keep hearing them say like, you can add your print library, and I really thought like I have like the New International Commentary and the New and Old Testaments and prints like. Wow, I've always wanted that logo, so I don't want to spend a thousand, whatever, eighteen hundred dollars on on adding that when I got print copies of it. So finally, the day is here. Well, you can actually search them, but you can't really read them. So let me let me demonstrate this. So if I search my books for Holy Spirit, and let me put in fee, and then I have my downloaded books that I actually own in my library, and then if I go on down. Here's my print books. Oh, look, Paul, the Spirit, and the People of God. And it tells you what pages to look on. You know, page 34, page 69, page 20. So I can search it. It's incredible. It's amazing. But I'm not actually adding the book to my library, even though, notice, that when I go to library, it shows it as if I own the book. Like, it's, it doesn't give, like, a little asterisk or anything that's like, hey, I don't actually own this. You can just search it. Uh, that part, I guess, if I'm per being perfectly honest, it bothers me and how that was communicated. The subject line of my email today, add your print library to logos. Huge oversell when the functionality itself, the feature itself is a phenomenal feature that it just needed to be explained for what it was. You, you literally cannot do what they said where they say you can now search your print library just like any logos digital resource. Because with any other digital logos resource, when I search my print library, I can click on that and get it in context within the book. I cannot get that here. So it is not just like any Logos digital resource. Love Logos, loyal customer, hope you buy Logos 10. The, the, the enhanced speed, the timeline's phenomenal. The fact book is worth its weight in gold. Uh, and the search functionality in your print library, like, wow. So I'm gonna add some links to the description of the video. I'm gonna add a link to Buy Logos 10. It's an affiliate link that blesses this ministry, helps us pay the bills, stay on YouTube, and you know keep things up to speed. Uh, I'm gonna add a feature upgrade. If you have a lower version and you wanna get up to Logos 10, the functionality and features of Logos 10 without getting all the extra books, save you some money. I'm gonna put that down there. And again, you know, let me know what you think of Logos 10. Have you used it? Are you curious? If you have questions, please ask. I'll address them as best I can in the comments and appreciate you watching. Take care.